Abuja has a new senator. And yes, we have just one. But this time, she's female. We get to chat with her in our interview segment on an array of issues, including the complaints of political exclusion by Abuja's natives, and what issues will be first on her docket as she gets into the Senate. In our focus on the nation's capital, we revisit the seventh annual cultural festival of the Bagi people at the Sakari's Palace in Karu, and the rich cultural displays which I personally got to see for the very first time that day. The festival was an opportunity for the natives of the nation's capital to unburden their grievances, these injustices they say they've been suffering for years, and their call for political inclusion in matters that affect them. And as we do every week, we update you on the biggest stories from Nigeria's presidency. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dateline Abuja. Hello and welcome to Dateline Abuja. I am Kayla Megwa. Let's begin with some of the major stories from Nigeria's seat of power. President Muhammad Buhari has launched the National Counter-Terrorism Center, a facility he declares will serve as his major infrastructural legacy to the incoming administration to effectively coordinate national security and counter-terrorism efforts. President Buhari made the declaration during the inauguration of two state-of-the-art facilities, including the new office of the National Security Advisor in Abuja, as part of efforts to address the protracted challenge of insecurity, particularly terrorism and violent extremism. President Muhammad Buhari says, given the chance of a free and fair election, as well as non-interference, as was witnessed on February 25 and March 18 elections, Nigerians have proved to be capable of deciding who leads them without anyone telling them what to do. President Buhari, who was speaking at a farewell meeting with the outgoing United States Ambassador Mary Beth Leonard at the State House in Abuja, said he was completely satisfied with his own role in the election process, staying above it without meddlesomeness or any form of interference. The President commended the outgoing Ambassador for the enormous achievements recorded in Nigeria-US relations in the three and a half years she had been here. The federal government has reiterated plans to open a grain hub, identifying Port Hackett as a target state. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mohamed Abubakar, disclosed this during a briefing after the Federal Executive Council meeting chaired by President Mohamed Buhari at the State House. He revealed that Port Hackett has been selected as the hub for the 25,000 metric tons of on wheat expected from Ukraine, as Russia also extends its supply of grains to the country through a United Nations agreement. Noting that the wheat consignment from Ukraine is on the high sea, the agriculture minister stated that the hub will create economic activities in the area. As part of its efforts towards transforming Nigeria's power and energy sector, the federal government has laid the foundation for the establishment of the first solar cell production factory in West Africa. The landmark achievement which places Nigeria amongst countries adopting alternative energy sources will also transform Nigeria's power and energy sector and boost the local economy. This was stated by Vice President Yemi Osibajo as he performed the foundation laying ceremony for the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure Solar Cells Production Plant in Gora, Nasrawa State. The Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria has voted to increase the benchmark interest rate by 50 basis points to 18 percent. Addressing journalists at the end of the two-day meeting in Abuja, the Sibian governor, Mr. Gordon Emefile, said the committee voted to keep the asymmetric corridor at plus 100 and minus 500 basis points around the NPR. The tightening of the rate, according to the Apex Bank governor, is expected to curtail inflation currently put at 21 percent. The proliferation of small arms and light weapons has contributed to the escalation of conflict and violence, which has impeded economic and social development in the Lake Chad region. That's according to the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, while speaking at a meeting of stakeholders in the Lake Chad Basin in Abuja. The meeting is aimed at tackling the proliferation of small arms and light weapons in the region.
At the event, the National Security Advisor, retired Major General Babangana Monguno, emphasizes the need to strengthen border control measures. Welcome back. I'm still not doing very well in my attempts to learn Gagi language. Still failing terribly. My teachers have almost given up on me. But give me some time, I'll get better. In our focus on the FCT, we're going back to watch the cultural displays of the Bagi people at the Palace of the Tsakaruyi in Karu. The Bagi are just one of the many tribes in the nation's capital. And while we were blown away by the cultural displays, there are problems affecting these natives, which they believe must be handled immediately. Please watch this. The Sa Karuyi Palace in Karu, Abuja, plays host to the Bagi natives who are celebrating the seventh annual cultural festival themed My Culture and I. <laughs> The Bagi are one of the native tribes of the nation's capital. They are peaceful, agriculturist, artistic and Nupoit speaking people living in the north central geopolitical zone of Nigeria, predominantly found in Niger, Kaduna, Nasarawa, Kogi and the federal capital territory. <laughs> is an opportunity for the natives to display their cultural wares and perform some of their traditional rites. Attendees and leaders of the Bagi community speak on the importance of preserving the Bagi culture. This tradition is almost facing away. And if we don't revive it, that means a time or a day is coming, you will not even see Bagi speaking uh, tribe again. So with this, it's reviving us, renewing us into our, you know, traditional tribes and culture. And um, for us to also know that God has blessed Bagiman. We, we, we have five states in Nigeria. Kaduna, Niger, Kwarabed, now Kogi, part of Kwarabed, now Kogi, uh, Nasra, Plateau, but now Nasra State, and FCT. So you find out that the northern headquarters follow us in Kaduna. And after that, the nation's capital has again followed us. So can you see that God is bringing us, bringing us, you know, up into history, which we don't have to, you know, uh, we, we have to boost it so that the whole world will know about it. It is very, very important for the people of Bagi culture in order to teach our younger generation what Bagi is. In, today, in, in, in many places today, you see a bad man, you will speak a, a, a language with him, he cannot, he cannot answer you because he doesn't even know what greetings means. Greetings, only common you said good morning with bad culture. You cannot say it. Therefore, we are calling the people of bad culture that we shouldn't forget our tradition. We should come and then learn. I remember when I was young, it is a day like this that I come and I learn some things. You were here when we asked one or two people here, what's the name of this senior language? And they could not answer. But today is a privilege where we come together and we share together and we recognize even those that we are not at the home for long. Today is it's an important day where we come together and we share more especially things that are missing in our dialects. Most of the sad things, if you ask me now, what's the name of this I'm putting on my language? I may answer you correctly, 
But if you ask our younger ones, they will not know. So today is a special day where we assemble all our sons and daughters to come together and learn so many items in our language. The peace-loving, transparent nature of the Bagi is legendary in this part. Northerners are fond of saying in Hausa language, Muishi Kamangwari, let's do it like the Bagi, an inference that a situation be handled with simplicity. The nine indigenous inhabitants of Abuja make up 9% of Abuja's population. They are the Horu, Wandara, Gade, Basa, Ibira, Bari, Amuamua, Bagi, Ganagana tribes. The plight of Abuja's natives has been a bone of contention for decades since Abuja was declared Nigeria's federal capital in December of 1991. Dislocating natives who had occupied the territory for over 4,000 years. The result of the dislocation was the removal of people from the ancestral homes, from spiritual symbols such as the Zuma rock, seeing their ancestral land be referred to as a no man's land, issues about adjusting to the new environment given by the government, and almost no political representation issues that discussed at the festival with the Commissioner, Public Complaints Commission, Honorable Ezekiel Dalhatu, advocating for the establishment of the Federal Capital Territory Indigenous Peoples Commission, an integration of 858 communities into the city's master plan. Go to Asokoro, go to Wuse and go to Meitama today, you will see no evidence of people who lived there before. So if it continues like that, it means we will completely be pushed away in our own fatherland. And our culture will be wiped away. I go strongly on government to help in preserving the culture. Because culture is the only thing that shows decency, decorum, and teach our children the way to go. Not the modern way. If you go to other places like in Canada, I went recently, they have Indigenous People Development Commission. Indigenous People Development Commission and their responsibility is to protect the cultural identity of the Indigenous people in Canada and they take care of their school without paying. They take care of their health free of charge. We can do the same. Since we are copying white people, where are we copying the negative things and leaving the remaining? Let's copy this and have FCT Indigenous People Development Commission. As we speak, we have Niger Delta Development Commission. Niger Delta Development Commission. What did they do? They take care of the indigenous people of Niger Delta because they are taking oil from their land. As we speak, we have North East Development Commission. North East Development Commission. What did they do? They are rebuilding structure that were destroyed by Boko Haram. They are giving them money, they are empowering them, and giving them free education. We have very few representatives against other states, first of all. Senator Aduda alone is not enough to lobby 108 senators. Senators, while other uh, states have like three, three senators, and then House of Representatives, we have just two. So we can never, we can never feel well represented in such a situation because no matter how they strive, no matter how they try, they cannot be able to do good enough to meet up with the yearnings of the federal capital city. The impasse between the need for development of communities and the compensation for natives of those communities who may be displaced because of development is one that is faced all over the world and governments typically come up with ways of ensuring natives are not excluded from governance. For a place as cosmopolitan as a nation's capital, where the vast majority of its residents are from all the states of the country, Natives of the nation's capital believe they are being ignored. They are calling on the federal government to give proper consideration to them, help them have a sense of belonging and equal representation as their counterparts enjoy in other states in the North Central.
my guest on the program is the newly elected senator representing the nation's capital, Iriti Kingibe. She gives us her plans for Abuja's natives and residents, talks about Abuja's water problem, infrastructure deficits in suburbs, demolitions and adherence to Abuja's master plan, as well as the decongestion of the city center. Please watch this. Senator Ireti Kingigwe, welcome to Dateline Abuja. Thank you for having me. It feels really good to say that. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm wondering who is she talking to? <laughs> does, it, does it ever sound odd? Like, yes, oh. it does. And most of the time I forget. You forget? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so somebody asked me, I want your contact. So I just wrote Ireti Kingigwe. Da, da, da. So it was another fellow senator. He goes, no, 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 madam. Dad, you haven't written it well. I said, ah, and what's wrong? said, you didn't add senator. I said, oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but tell us a bit about what is in store for residents of the FCT. Obviously, I have to work closely with whoever the minister is. And one of the most important projects that I'm going to insist that the minister of FCT must execute is water for the FCT. And I don't mean random boreholes. I mean a proper water system, pipes, utilizing Lower Usuma Dam and Jabi Lake to provide water for the FCT on a permanent basis, not just boreholes. Because we do have a water problem yes, in the that, FCT. that is true. What, what would you say is the root cause of this problem? Uh, the problem is that the water, water was just provided for Maitama Asokoro, perhaps Garki, Central Business District, and that's it. And Abuja has grown. Maybe when we started off, that's all there was. But now Abuja really has grown and water needs to be provided for the, the residents. Water is not a luxury, it's a necessity. And it's one of the most important things that I'm going to look into. Let's talk about one other issue, which is the natives of the FCT. What areas are you going to be looking at? How are you going to address some of these issues that they have kept bringing up? Or oh, we don't want to be known as no man's land. Uh, we want our history to be preserved, you know, and things like that. What areas would you be focusing on? Well, I will foc I'll tell you about the concessions that I think, and I call them concessions because the issues of the natives are also the issues of other Nigerians. And when you say the natives, who are the natives? You have to define them. Whenever um, people have asked me this question, I tell them, I said, when most people say natives, they mean baggies. But in truth... There are more tribes. There are more tribes. There are many more tribes. There are nine tribes. You have the nine Koros, tribes. you have Gede, you have uh, Koro, you have um, Kotoibira, you have Fulani, you have Hausa. All of them are natives. Do you understand? So they all want the same thing that everybody else wants. They want light. They want water. They want better schools. They want better hospitals. So the issues that the natives have are not unique to them because they're natives. They're just, they're Nigerian problems. They, everybody has the same problems. So, but there are certain things that I acknowledge to be a, a, a problem for the natives. One, over a period of time, there'll be a crop of very educated indigenous people who would not need concessions because they can compete with anybody else. Secondly, <clears throat> is one of the things they spoke about is preserving some of their culture. So we they suggested a tourist village that depicted their culture and I thought brilliant idea if I get elected I will get back to you and you can work on that project with me and tell me how do you want it where do you want it located how many in this village how many cultures do you think should be represented here the third thing is as I said before in other interviews it is my dream to see Abuja spread out meaning why put all the ministries in choked up in the middle? Why don't you send some ministries to Abaji, some to Kuje, some to Kwali, some to Wagwalada, Bwari, all over? But if you do that, then the people who were already there need to be protected. The master plan has to evolve, taking considera into consideration what 
the reality is now, not what we would have wanted it to be. This is what we have on the ground. So how do we move forward improving it? The master plan in itself has caters to a particular number of people who are supposed to be in the FCT. How do you feel about that? We can anticipate the fact that as a capital, more people are going to come in and therefore plan for it. And that's what I see that's not being done. We, we're not planning for it. So housing, nothing. Transportation, nothing. Water, nothing. Power, lighting, nothing. A plan has to be in place. And that is what we are going to look at. There are quite a number of demolitions going on in the FCT. In fact, last week alone, I counted seven. And these demolitions, not buildings, it's shanties. Mm -hmm. So we're having, a, we're having a situation where shanties come up in a place, mm -hmm. they come, demolish, and then they come back up again. Mm -hmm. Because and, and you're not providing them with an alternative. So talk to us about what your, what your thoughts are on this particular situation. Because we've been going back and forth about this for so long with the FCT authorities about the demolition of shanties. Go oh, and look for a piece of land somewhere. Clear it. We have architects and engineers in FCDA. Get somebody to do a prototype of some low-cost housing two, three bedrooms, maybe two, two types, and then get two engineers and inform the people that, okay, create a grid work, allocate those spaces to them. Let them build it with your supervision because as an engineer, I know that if they, the foundations are properly built, the building will be okay. So have the FCD engineers on site just to make sure that the, the buildings are properly the foundations are right, the buildings are properly built, and you put a borehole or two, put one feeder pillar or arrange for solar for them, and you've got a, a, a community that's much better than the one you demolished. I, I keep saying that the more privileged members of a society must keep an eye on the less privileged. You know, th there is that conversation about how the way we treat the least among us is the definition of who we, we are. are. That's the truth. There's still so much to talk about. Uh, I'm sure this is not going to be the only time we have you on this program. Mm -hmm. We sure still have to talk not. about the security situation in the FCT. We still have to talk about women inclusiveness. You're one of three. That's true. You are one of three women. It's worse now. Yes, I agree. It is worse now. It's sad. But I think that now that we, we, it's gotten so bad... I think it's about to start improving because it's a situation that even the men are embarrassed about. The nation is embarrassed about it. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't reflect well on us as a nation. The giant of Africa, really? I'm going to do my best. I assure the people of the FCT that I will ensure that I do not disappoint them, that I will give them my very best. We'll be holding on to that word. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm really sorry, but that's all the time we have thank for today's conversation on Date and Abuja. Good luck with all the work that you do. And thank you so much for being with us. And thank you for having me. Thanks to my guest and to everyone who spoke to us today on the program. This is a conversation that must be had repeatedly. Many of us in Abuja had just believed that the natives were settled and relocated as the city continued to develop. We believed that their culture was being preserved alongside this development and that the area councils were getting allocations and being treated as local government areas. The balance required to ensure everyone in Abuja gets the governance they desire is crucial to our survival in this place. Insecurity and infrastructure deficits must be attended to, and residents must begin to have a sense that Abuja belongs to all of us, and we must keep her safe and beautiful. That's Daitland Abuja this week. Please let us know the happenings in your neighborhood using the social media handles showing right now on your screens. Thank you so much for watching. I am Kayla Megwa. See you next time.